President Obama has just recently signed a law when it comes to the uh, it, well, it actually lowers the uh, student loan interest rates. Now, is this a good change for students or is this a bad change for students? Well, I'm going to talk about some of the specifics. Okay, so in July 1st, student loan student loan rates went up to about 6.8 percent because the the student loan had ran out. Now, this deal reestablishes it at 3.9 percent for borrowers, and that's for undergrads, right? And uh, graduate students will borrow 5.4 percent. But the thing the thing about this that uh, I don't like personally is the fact that the student loan rates are tied to the bond markets. So when the economy gets better, student loan interest rates will rise. Um, now, according to this deal, uh, those rates will be capped at 8.25%. So it can't go higher than that, but that's already incredibly high. And that's just for uh, that's for undergrads, too. So, I mean, what do you guys think? Is this a, is this a bad deal or is this a good deal? Well, I, I think... Hmm. It's hard to say. I think it's probably better than just leaving it alone, but it should just that that contingency shouldn't be there. And and why are we? I know why, but we shouldn't even be putting our our graduating students into debt in the first place. So we're creating a cycle of of poverty by uh, bringing our, our new workers into the workforce already in debt, already in the negative. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, no freedom, no power to, um, you know, take chances, explore their options, because um, they already have to think about taking the first job that they can possibly get doing whatever so that they can pay off their student loans. And then they're paying off their student loans for the next 30 years until retirement, and then they die, and that's life. It's depressing. That is pretty depressing, Sean. Undepressing. Um. Well, uh, you know, you know, I don't like, you know, I don't, I, I don't like the student loan program at all. I think that the only deal that makes sense for students is for the government not to lend money to students and for the government to not make it impossible to be go bankrupt from your student loans. I think that if you let banks lend the money and you say that the the students can go bankrupt, then there's no possible way that a bank would lend kids all this money to go to school. Like, it would be ridiculous. So that would have to force the price of college to go down. Now, we've been over this a million times, me and Jeff, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, that's going to be my position until it happens. Like, you can't, you have to make this dischargeable. There has to be, you can't, you can't take the risk out of, out of capitalism. If you take the risk out of it for the banks, then they're, or, or the government, then they're just going to give loans willy nilly. The students are going to go are, are going to be able to borrow anything they want, and the colleges are going to be able to charge anything they want. There has to be some risk. And now, I, I don't think there should be. An, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't think there should be a, a profit motive or a profit incentive when it comes to higher education, especially when a lot of the jobs nowadays require that higher education. Um, I agree. Higher yeah. education higher education is for the benefit of the entire society, not just the individual. It isn't just for one individual's benefit. It's for everyone's benefit. And I think that we should have public colleges for people to come get a free college education, the same way that we get a free high school education that, so we can have an enlightened, educated populace of people. Everyone should have access to a college education. And if you want what is no. deemed a fancier education at some sort of private college then, and you can afford it, then fine. But everyone should be, be able to get a basic college education. Now, now there, there's actually a, a plan that's being tried somewhere else, and I want to get into that a little bit later. But do you remember back when uh, Elizabeth Warren, one of her first bills uh, out in um, the Senate, right, one of the first bills that she sponsored was uh, t basically tying the student loan interest rate to the same as the Fed discount window. That's at 0.75%. Now, I would have actually been in favor of that as well, but I think the current the the current bill is 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 terrible. And, and let me tell you why, because the government is projected to make 50 billion dollars in loan profit. The government is literally making money off the backs of students. I don't think that's right at all. No, that's not right. 
and and especially you know they're they're using it to pay off the deficit. So you're paying off the deficit on the backs of the students who are going to be mired in debt as soon as they and as soon as they graduate and and a, and a deficit that they didn't create. And not they're only not, that, but they're going to graduate in all this debt into a very weak job field now, and, and with very weak wages. Now, the Economic Policy Institute shows that wages for graduates have declined 12.7%, and the, under, the unemployment rate for young college graduates is 8.8%. So you're loading all this debt onto these students that have a very difficult time finding a job or they have a very difficult time finding uh, a full-time job even because look at this stat and you're going to be blown away by this the underemployment rate for graduates is 18.3 percent so that means that people are working but they're working in jobs that are not full-time and are not tied to what they went to school for and right. according to uh, to this study, um, there is no evidence of young people sheltering in school to avoid the job market and no uptick in enrollment due to the recession. And what I mean by sheltering is that will people like, oh, well, it's poor. You know, the job market sucks. I'm just going to go to school and get whatever kind of education I can and get these student loans to live. Well, it actually shows that people are not doing that. And so I thought that was actually pretty fascinating because – you hear that argument that, you know, in certain circles where people are just going to school just to get, get that free college loan money, you know what I mean? And it's just not it's not happening. Well, look, I'm sure some people are taking advantage, but it's not the vast majority. But the problem is, and is interest rates are a signal in a market, and, and they're a signal that directs resources in a certain way. So we have... Um, and, and I don't agree with the feds giving the banks that lower interest rate, but I don't agree with them, them giving it to students. I, I think that the rates should vary depending on the degree that you're getting. Like a bank, if they lend you money to go get an engineering degree, then you're more likely to make um, to, to pay that loan back because an engineering typically pays more. So I think that interest rate, the banks would probably set it at a, as a lower rate. And a psychology degree, like we have way too many kids in psychology, so you're essentially wasting your money on that. So that rate would be higher. Like it, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me that we're like we're funneling all this money into education the same exact way that we're funneling it into housing with all the guarantees and and all that, and we're expecting a different result. What happened in housing is housing prices ballooned. What's happening in education is education prices are ballooning. Like and you, you have to think that we're in the middle of a bubble, essentially, is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, with one trillion, what? Um, I should say what, there's one trillion dollars in student loan debt, and we have a very high default rate. So I think that you're right in the fact that we are in a bubble. And if this bursts, I mean, I don't know. This could this have the potential to bring down the uh, United States economy? I mean, it's gonna hurt. It's going to hurt. And, 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 of course, the people it's going to hurt the most are the students. I mean, the students, the colleges are going to get hurt because the colleges are building, like, all these extravagant things to attract more students. Like, everybody's going to get hurt except for the banks who are guaranteed from failure. So, Well, there is a proposed solution, though, and I said I was going to get to that. And there's a school in Oregon that actually is trying to make college tuition-free and student loan free. Now, it's not necessarily free, as in you don't pay to go to school, but it would actually mean that students would pay a fixed percentage of their income to the state for a set number of years after graduation. So you wouldn't have to borrow student loans, and you would basically be able to pay what you can afford after you graduate. Whether or not you're making a lot of money, you pay more. If you make a smaller amount of money, you pay less. And I think that might actually be something definitely worth looking at. That, that sounds like a doable option. I mean, and because it's, you get the student loans out of the way, so people like, you know, Sean, would this would this be a good alternative? What do you think? I mean, look, if, if the colleges or, or, like, whatever, they want to try and work out a different way, then that's fine with me. But, like, I'm, I'm always weary of this weird, like, 
if you if you get a work I like I understand you get a worse job, you pay less, you get a better job, you get paid more. Like that sounds more fair, but like I I I I would want to see how the college is going to operate without dipping into taxpayers more. Like you know what I mean? Like if, yeah, it, if it, and and it's a relatively new thing and they're looking at the feasibility of this option, but I think it's something that should be taken seriously and I would like to I would definitely like to learn more as this you know, proposed way of paying for college or getting people to be able to afford college works out, you know. And I mean, I mean, the way the way I go to college is I basically I'll I'll save up, pay for a semester. If I have enough money, which doesn't always happen, then then I can go to the next semester. If not, I try and you know take that semester off, work off. So I do on and off in order to pay for it without going into the debt because I'm not borrowing money that that just doesn't make any sense to borrow. So like, like there there are other ways. You just like you can't go to the like I don't go to a big university or anything. Like, right. I, I you know what I mean? I go I I intentionally go to save money, but I don't know like I don't know if my degree's going to be worth anything when I'm when I'm finally done. Well, looking at all of these figures from the Economic Policy Institute, I I don't I don't blame you for that. I mean, it's still a rather uh, pretty poor job market out there and poor for young people like yourself and it's I don't know you know we gotta we gotta do something I mean we have to have better solutions than being able to take out you know or having to take out government loans and everything like that that you cannot discharge through bankruptcy but and like I, I think you have to let them be dischargeable through bankruptcy like absolutely. There, ha there has to be a risk for the lender the lender has to be afraid that they're gonna lose money in order to that that's what creates lending standards and that just doesn't happen. You're just funneling money through, through, through the students to the colleges. Like it's never, and it's never going to go away because like the colleges are going to lobby the government for more loan money. The pro now we have for-profit colleges, which are basically a which scam. Which are a disaster. But they're a scam in order to get government money. They're like they're 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 o they only exist because of the student loan program. That's or at least the bad ones. And we need we need this is. These are reasons, perfectly valid reasons, why we need um, education reform. And I think, you know, Oregon's got a very, very interesting program. And I'm sure that there are other ways, um, you know, like they do in, in Europe. 